Day 35. Exodus 34 to 35. Then the Lord said to Moses, Chisel out two stone tablets like the originals, and I will write on them the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke. Be ready in the morning, and come up on Mount Sinai to present yourself before me on the mountaintop. No one may go up with you, in fact, no one may be seen anywhere on the mountain, not even the flocks or herds may graze in front of the mountain. So Moses chiseled out two stone tablets like the originals. He rose early in the morning, and taking the two stone tablets in his hands, he went up Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him. And the Lord descended in a cloud, stood with him there, and proclaimed his name, the Lord. Then the Lord passed in front of Moses and called out, The Lord, the Lord God, is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in loving devotion and faithfulness, maintaining loving devotion to a thousand generations, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin. Yet he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished, he will visit the iniquity of the fathers on their children and grandchildren to the third and fourth generations. Moses immediately bowed down to the ground and worshipped. O Lord, he said, if I have indeed found favor in your sight, my Lord, please go with us. Although this is a stiff-necked people, forgive our iniquity and sin, and take us as your inheritance. And the Lord said, Behold, I am making a covenant. Before all your people I will perform wonders that have never been done in any nation in all the world. All the people among whom you live will see the Lord's work, for it is an awesome thing that I am doing with you. Observe what I command you this day. I will drive out before you the Amorites, Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Be careful not to make a treaty with the inhabitants of the land you are entering, lest they become a snare in your midst. Rather, you must tear down their altars, smash their sacred stones, and chop down their Asherah poles. For you must not worship any other god, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Do not make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, for when they prostitute themselves to their gods and sacrifice to them, they will invite you, and you will eat their sacrifices. And when you take some of their daughters as brides for your sons, their daughters will prostitute themselves to their gods and cause your sons to do the same. You shall make no molten gods for yourselves. You are to keep the feast of unleavened bread. For seven days at the appointed time in the month of Aviv, you are to eat unleavened bread as I commanded you. For in the month of Aviv you came out of Egypt. The first offspring of every womb belongs to me, including all the firstborn males among your livestock, whether cattle or sheep. You must redeem the firstborn of a donkey with a lamb, but if you do not redeem it, you are to break its neck. You must redeem all the firstborn of your sons. No one shall appear before me empty-handed. Six days you shall labor, but on the seventh day you shall rest, even in the seasons of plowing and harvesting, you must rest. And you are to celebrate the feast of weeks with the first fruits of the wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the turn of the year. Three times a year all your males are to appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. For I will drive out the nations before you and enlarge your borders, and no one will covet your land when you go up three times a year to appear before the Lord your God. Do not offer the blood of a sacrifice to me along with anything leavened, and do not let any of the sacrifice from the Passover feast remain until morning. Bring the best of the first fruits of your soil to the house of the Lord your God. You must not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. The Lord also said to Moses, Write down these words, for in accordance with these words I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. So Moses was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights without eating bread or drinking water. He wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hands, he was unaware that his face had become radiant from speaking with the Lord. Aaron and all the Israelites looked at Moses, and behold, his face was radiant. And they were afraid to approach him. But Moses called out to them, so Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke to them. And after this all the Israelites came near, and Moses commanded them to do everything that the Lord had told him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would remove the veil until he came out. And when he came out, he would tell the Israelites what he had been commanded, and the Israelites would see that the face of Moses was radiant. So Moses would put the veil back over his face until he went in to speak with the Lord. Then Moses assembled the whole congregation of Israel and said to them, These are the things that the Lord has commanded you to do, for six days work may be done, but the seventh day shall be your holy day, 
a Sabbath of complete rest to the Lord. Whoever does any work on that day must be put to death. Do not light a fire in any of your dwellings on the Sabbath day. Moses also told the whole congregation of Israel, This is what the Lord has commanded, Take from among you an offering to the Lord. Let everyone whose heart is willing bring an offering to the Lord, gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, fine linen and goat hair, ram skins dyed red and fine leather, acacia wood, olive oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense, and onyx stones and gemstones to be mounted on the ephod and breastpiece. Let every skilled craftsman among you come and make everything that the Lord has commanded, the tabernacle with its tent and covering, its clasps and frames, its crossbars, posts, and bases, the ark with its poles and mercy seat, and the veil to shield it, the table with its poles, all its utensils, and the bread of the presence, the lampstand for light with its accessories and lamps and oil for the light, the altar of incense with its poles, the anointing oil and fragrant incense, the curtain for the doorway at the entrance to the tabernacle, the altar of burnt offering with its bronze grate, its poles, and all its utensils, the basin with its stand, the curtains of the courtyard with its posts and bases, and the curtain for the gate of the courtyard, the tent pegs for the tabernacle and for the courtyard, along with their ropes, and the woven garments for ministering in the holy place, both the holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments for his sons to serve as priests. Then the whole congregation of Israel withdrew from the presence of Moses. And everyone whose heart stirred him and whose spirit prompted him came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work on the tent of meeting, for all its services, and for the holy garments. So all who had willing hearts, both men and women, came and brought brooches and earrings, rings and necklaces, and all kinds of gold jewelry. And they all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. Everyone who had blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen, goat hair, ram skins dyed red, or articles of fine leather, brought them. And all who could present an offering of silver or bronze brought it as a contribution to the Lord. Also, everyone who had acacia wood for any part of the service brought it. Every skilled woman spun with her hands and brought what she had spun, blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen. And all the skilled women whose hearts were stirred spun the goat hair. The leaders brought onyx stones and gemstones to mount on the ephod and breast piece, as well as spices and olive oil for the light, for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense. So all the men and women of the Israelites whose hearts prompted them brought a free will offering to the Lord for all the work that the Lord through Moses had commanded them to do. Then Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord has called by name Bezalel son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And he has filled him with the Spirit of God, with skill, ability, and knowledge in all kinds of craftsmanship, to design artistic works in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut gemstones for settings, and to carve wood, so that he may be a master of every artistic craft. And the Lord has given both him and Ohaliab son of Ahisamach, of the tribe of Dan, the ability to teach others. He has filled them with skill to do all kinds of work as engravers, designers, embroiderers in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and fine linen, and as weavers, as artistic designers of every kind of craft. Matthew 22 verses 23 to 46. That same day the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and questioned him. Teacher, they said, Moses declared that if a man dies without having children, his brother is to marry the widow and raise up offspring for him. Now there were seven brothers among us. The first one married and died without having children. So he left his wife to his brother. The same thing happened to the second and third brothers, down to the seventh. And last of all, the woman died. In the resurrection, then, whose wife will she be of the seven? For all of them were married to her. Jesus answered, You are mistaken because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. In the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. Instead, they will be like the angels in heaven. But concerning the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what God said to you, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. When the crowds heard this, they were astonished at his teaching. And when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they themselves gathered together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with a question, Teacher, which commandment is the greatest in the law? Jesus declared, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, Love your neighbor as yourself. 
All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. While the Pharisees were assembled, Jesus questioned them, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? David's, they answered. Jesus said to them, How then does David in the spirit call him Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. So if David calls him Lord, how can he be David's son? No one was able to answer a word, and from that day on no one dared to question him any further.